present tense. I take another sip from the bottle I keep in the paper bag, just another lost soul wandering San Francisco, not deserving of a second glance from passers-by. The only signs that I am not from here are a fresh haircut and shave, clean clothes, and the absence of a bag to store my belongings. What started out as a fantastic and long-awaited getaway for my wife's birthday went to hell. The cheap liquor is starting to take its toll, and I look around the park. I don't even know exactly where I am. How could it all turn out like this, 16 years ago? It was nice to be back at school, and the summer was great, but I spent most of it working to save up for college. My parents were middle class, and given that I had siblings, we all knew that the money wouldn't be enough, although, strangely, we never discussed this in detail. I started working during the summer whenever I could a couple of years ago. So for me, summer wasn't the long, easy break it was for most kids, and I was excited to start my third year of high school. After meeting my friends and socializing, I was heading to my first class and was a little late because I had been talking for too long. The corridors were almost empty when I saw a girl running towards me with a huge backpack holding a large folder and looking at the schedule with a lost expression on her face. About ten feet away from me, she must have hit a wet spot on the floor because she tripped and fell to her knees, scattering papers from the folder all over the place. I ran over to help her. Are you okay? Yes, she looked at the floor embarrassed. Let me help. I already started collecting her papers. Then he extended his hand, which she accepted. When she stood up, she looked into my face and our eyes met. I saw a cute, freckled face with a tear running down her cheek. I couldn't help but wipe the tears from her face with my fingers. After a few moments I realized that I had been looking at her for too long. She felt it too because her face became even redder and she looked down but smiled, showing her cute dimples. My name is Ben, I introduced myself. Hello, I'm Beth. Is this your first day? and so it was. She had just started high school, got a late drop off, and was rushing to find her first class. I told her where to go and said I'll see you later. A two-year age difference doesn't seem like much, but in high school, the difference between a 16-year-old third-year student and a 14-year-old freshman seems significant. I constantly found reasons to cross paths with Beth. I just felt attracted to her. We finally started dating when I asked her to a school dance. At that time, I was a typical rebellious teenager, not knowing where I belonged or what to do next. I was tall, but not heavy built. I played basketball and ran, but it wasn't my hobby. I loved music and played guitar in a band with friends. We weren't good, but it was fun and Beth seemed to enjoy it. I had a couple relationships in high school, nothing serious, although I did gain some physical experience. But with Beth, it was different. Her parents didn't approve of me at first. But her father and mine worked for the same company, and he knew and respected my father. He made it clear that not only would he beat me, but he would force my father to do the same if I hurt his daughter. But they allowed us to meet. Throughout our high school relationship, I never went beyond third base. I was in no hurry. We spent much more time talking and just chatting than kissing. Our characters were so in harmony that I simply could not keep her at a distance. She was the first person I could completely open up to. She understood me completely. We liked the same music, the same food, the same books. We had the same weird sense of humor. It was also a difficult time for her. Her parents were getting divorced, and it was quite difficult. I was next to her. We fell in love. Although that year and the next seemed endless, they still came to an end. I was accepted to Ohio State University, which was four hours away. Although it was painfully difficult, I didn't want to deprive Beth of her last two years of school or selfishly deprive myself of new college experiences. I've seen my older friends try to carry their high school relationships into college, and it never ends well. Breaking up with Beth was one of the hardest decisions of my life. I was physically ill, and she was inconsolable, although she said that she understood and at least logically agreed with my reasons. When I went to college, we lost touch. I had two semi-serious relationships and several frivolous affairs. I have never felt the same connection that I once felt with Beth. 
through friends, I found out that she started dating a guy named Jack, who was in the same class as her. I vaguely remembered him as a big guy, and it turns out he was the star of the football team and a wrestler. I felt a pang of jealousy when I heard about it, but I had to admit that I let her go myself. Twelve years ago, I was about to start my third year at Ohio State University after spending last summer in Columbus earning money to pay tuition when I learned from my mom that Beth was coming to the same university as a freshman in a week. I was both delighted and scared when she told me this, excited because part of me wanted to rekindle the past and scared because she could still be dating Jack or reject me. It helped that mom said she heard Jack was getting ready for military service and that he and Beth had broken up. I was alone at the time. My last girlfriend wrote me a Dear John letter over the summer. I was pretty upset and angry, but I felt better knowing that Beth was coming. I found out which dorm she would be living in, and on moving day I hung around until I saw Beth, her father, her sister, and the woman I assumed was her stepmother pull up. I walked up, greeted them, and offered to help, pretending I was just nearby. Beth seemed happy to see me, but was also reserved and quieter than I remembered her. It didn't take a genius to figure out that she was still reeling from her breakup with Jack. Her father and sister were glad that I was there to help and look after her, and we had a good conversation. I spent the next three months with my friend Beth, and gradually she began to open up to me. She talked a lot about Jack, whom I knew she loved and probably still loved. He didn't want to go to college and didn't have good enough grades to do so. His father, grandfather, and cousins were all military men, and they encouraged him to follow in their footsteps. He asked Beth to stay with him, even hinting at marriage, but she ultimately rejected the idea. She had too many dreams and goals, and their paths in life were too different. I knew they still talked sometimes. I took her home for Thanksgiving and spent some time with her family. I had good conversations with her mom and sisters who kept dropping hints about when we would start dating again. Finally, during the Christmas holidays, we got back together. Her family was throwing a party and I was invited. At one point I saw Beth standing under one of the many mistletoes hanging here and there. I walked up behind her, turned her around and kissed her surprised lips. She let out a slight squeak of surprise, but after a moment she began to respond to the kiss which lasted almost a minute. When we separated, I heard applause and screams. We were both embarrassed to see her sisters laughing and smiling. We spent the rest of the Christmas holiday as a couple, holding hands, kissing, looking at lights, and shopping. New Year's Eve was just around the corner and Beth suggested going to her friend's party. It turned out that her friend Samantha was organizing a grand event. Samantha was from one of the wealthiest families in our city, her father was the president of a tool and dye manufacturer and had many contracts with the auto industry, so they lived in a large house with many spare rooms. It was awkward showing up with Beth at the party since most of her friends didn't remember me and were used to seeing her with Jack. Some of her friends were clearly not happy about this. The alcohol flowed freely, but we danced to burn off the calories, so by midnight we were both in high spirits. We danced around each other, kissed and cuddled together for most of the evening. Around 11 o'clock Beth whispered to me that she couldn't wait until midnight, and I was on edge too. Right after the clock struck midnight and we kissed, she pulled me up the stairs by the hand. We chose one of the available rooms when we arrived and headed to where I locked the door, and she sat down on the bed. I was waiting for this, she said. Me too. Take off your shirt and pants, she smiled. I kicked off my shoes and socks, deciding that standing around in my underwear and socks wouldn't be very sexy. I then gave her a little dance while slowly removing my shirt and pants. I was glad I was eating right and going to the gym. I had no intention of entering a bodybuilding competition, but I had a flat stomach and some muscle. Beth looked at me with a sensual look, licked her lips, and then giggled. Is this for me? Can I see him? I slowly pulled down my panties. Mm. Come here. I came closer and she gently put her arm around him, touching him with attention and care. Then she smiled and leaned closer, lightly brushing her lips against his. Excitement overwhelmed me 
and I felt everything inside me shrink from the emotions I was experiencing. She met my gaze, her eyes sparkling with mischief, and I knew this was going to be a special moment. However, I had to pull myself together and pull away gently so as not to lose control of my feelings. Your turn, I said with a smile. She began to undress with grace and confidence, turning the process into a real show. I noticed how her figure had changed since we last saw each other, and I could not take my eyes off her movements. Taking off her dress, she carefully unclasped her bra and finally appeared before me in all her natural beauty. I was delighted with the way she looked, her confidence and sincerity were mesmerizing. We continued dancing to the soft music that was coming from the floor below. Her movements were smooth and sensual, and she, turning her back to me, gently sank next to me. We felt each other with our whole bodies, and I hugged her, enjoying the warmth and closeness of the moment. Our kisses became more and more passionate, conveying the full depth of feelings that we experienced at that moment. As she turned around and sat next to me, we continued to find joy in every moment, enjoying the closeness and how long we had waited for this togetherness. We knew that we had the whole night ahead of us to spend it together, enjoying every moment of communication and togetherness. It was amazing, I said. For me too, I could get used to this. Do you want to go to bed? We cleaned ourselves up a little in the bathroom, which was next to the room, and went to bed. We had sex two more times that night, and then made love long and tenderly in the morning. When we returned to Ohio State University, we both realized that we were now an exclusive couple. It was like the times we met before again. We discussed everything and had such a natural connection. I quickly fell in love again. On Valentine's Day, I decided to surprise her. I came to her dorm with flowers. Ben, I didn't expect you, she said. I handed her the roses. I decided to surprise you. She hesitated and then let me into the room. I immediately noticed a large vase of roses on her table, which looked better than the ones I had brought. I looked at her questioningly. Um, who is this from? I asked. From Jack, she replied. I thought he was in military training now. I haven't thought about Jack for the last month, and she stopped mentioning him. I thought they were done. He completed basic training back in October and is now training to be a Navy SEAL in California. He sent them to me. She looked down at the floor. Look, I don't want to seem jealous, but I'm just surprised. Do you still keep in touch? Yes, we sometimes talk on the phone, she admitted. I recalled that several times when I saw her in long telephone conversations, she said that she was talking with friends. Do you still have anything? I asked carefully. No, Ben, we're just friends. I don't want to push you, Beth, but I wish you had told me sooner. I saw that she felt guilty and a tear rolled down her cheek. I lifted her face by the chin so that she looked into my eyes. I love where our relationship is going, Beth. I feel so natural and comfortable next to you. I always have. Let's not have secrets from each other. Only honesty, okay? Yes, sorry I didn't tell you. I thought you'd be jealous. Jack was jealous of other guys, and it was hard. I'm not like that, Beth. I trust you. She smiled. I'll go wash myself and find a vase for your flowers. She went out into the common corridor to the bathroom. I noticed a card next to the flowers. It had a nice design on the front with typical hallmark lettering and was slightly open. I saw the inscription inside. I will always love you, Beth. Jack. Eight years ago, after completing my bachelor's degree, I decided to continue my studies and enrolled in a master's degree so that I could stay at the university with Beth until she graduated. We ended up graduating at the same time in May and were ready to start a new chapter in life. Beth looked incredible as she ran towards me on the beach in her white bikini. Her red hair was loose and flowing behind her under the influence of the sea wind. She stopped in front of my sun lounger, where I was lying, trying to relax and get some sun. Her beautiful smile with sparkling white teeth and slightly tanned, freckled skin that had darkened over three days in Cancun looked stunning. Ready for a swim, the water is great. Of course, I jumped up and grabbed her hand as she pulled me towards the water. 
It felt cold at first because my skin was hot from the sun, but after a couple of minutes I knew it would be fine. I picked her up, and she screamed with delight until I softened her cries with kisses. My parents will see. She teased me, and then, in a lower, seductive voice, she added, Wait until evening. Maybe we should go skinny dipping. I felt my body respond to her kisses, to the feeling of her body, and to the thoughts of what awaits us later. The water hid my embarrassment due to the arousal that had arisen, so everything was in order. Beth's mom and stepdad were paying for the trip as a college graduation gift for both of us, since we clearly couldn't afford a week in Cancun at a luxury resort, at least not yet. Therefore, her parents and two younger sisters went with us, with whom we shared adjacent rooms. It didn't bother me because I got along great with her family and they loved me. The only catch was that we had to sleep separately as her parents were a bit old-fashioned. I'm sure they knew Beth and I were close, considering we'd been dating for seven years, but it was a don't-ask, don't-tell thing, and they clearly didn't want it to happen in front of them. At 22, Beth was amazing. While her appearance was eye-catching red hair, green eyes, freckles, dimples, full lips and mouth, heart-shaped face, toned but feminine body with shapely hips and ample breasts, she was also smart, funny, insightful, and caring. Any man would consider himself incredibly lucky to have her in his life, and I considered myself that way. Everywhere we went, men gave her admiring glances or outright stares, and more than one guy told me that I better not let her go too far. I was not a jealous person, at least not to the extent that I controlled her every move. I knew she still talked to Jack sometimes, and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't relieved when she told me a few years ago that Jack had found an amazing woman and they were serious. I wanted to take the next step and make her mine forever. When I heard about this trip, I decided it would be the perfect time. I raised all the money I could and put down the deposit for the ring. Now I was just looking for the right moment to ask the big question. After dinner, we left Beth's family and went for a long walk on the beach watching the sunset. It was absolutely magical, and I felt like the love between us was just in the air. When it got dark, we found a secluded place and stripped naked. After playing in the water, we started kissing. Although we had made love many times, especially since we started living together, this was different. I felt her wet body, her lush breasts pressed against my chest, her hot lips on mine, and my hand was in her hair. Our kisses became more and more passionate, and she wrapped her arms around my neck, pressing herself against me. My hand got tangled in her long hair, and the other went to her waist, pulling her closer. She sighed quietly, clinging to me with even more tenderness. She sank lightly into my arms and wrapped her legs around my waist, moving in a rhythm that expressed our mutual attraction. We were in harmony with each other, Every moment brought even more warmth and intimacy. I leaned down and pressed myself against her chest, feeling how she responded to my every move with soft sighs. I want you next to me, she whispered, her eyes burning with tenderness. We were on the shore, surrounded by waves that washed our feet. I held her tightly to me, immersed in this moment. We found ourselves on the damp sand, allowing the ocean to surround us as the water rushed over our bodies. It was a moment of absolute unity, the sea, the wind, her presence nearby. I looked into her eyes, full of love, and felt something special being created between us. I love you, Ben, she said, her voice quiet but full of sincerity. I love you too, Beth, with all my heart, I replied, unable to contain my emotions. Our connection grew stronger as we enjoyed every minute of this beautiful evening by the ocean. When it was over, I knew I would never want or need another woman but this one. The next evening presented itself with the very moment I had been waiting for. Beth's parents booked a snorkeling excursion that ended on a romantic little island where there would be bonfires, food, drinks, and live music. I didn't forget to take the ring along with my clothes. The day was gorgeous, and we enjoyed watching the colorful fish and rays and just hanging out on the boat. In the evening, the chefs outdid themselves with delicious seafood and steaks, while music and dancing added to the romance. Finally, when the evening came to an end, Beth, her parents and sisters, and I sat around the fire, 
enjoying the clear starry sky and the sound of the ocean. The day was just perfect, as was the whole trip. I excused myself and went out to get the ring hidden in my bag. As soon as I returned to the fire, I felt a sudden wave of nervousness. Not because of the decision itself to propose to Beth, I had no doubt about that. But before me there was a moment that could change my whole life. My heart was beating faster and my hands were shaking slightly, but the moment had come. I walked up to the group and got down on one knee in front of Beth and took her hands. She looked at me in surprise, not understanding what was happening. Please get up, my love, I asked. She stood up, still embarrassed. Her family began to take notice of us, and I noticed that at least her mother already had an idea of what was about to happen. I started to say, Beth, you are the most amazing woman I have ever known, and continued to talk about our wonderful moments together over the past few years, about my love and devotion to her, about hopes for our future. Having finished, I took out the box with the ring, opened it, and said, Beth, will you marry me? As I spoke, her expression changed from surprise to something incomprehensible, perhaps fear. She just stood there, and the seconds seemed endless. At this moment I began to feel an unpleasant chill and internal panic. Beth? I asked carefully. I, uh, I. She hesitated, and then quickly turned around and walked away, heading towards the shore. I was shocked. Looking around at her family's faces, I saw that they too were stunned. Then rage and humiliation washed over me. I felt a blush of shame flood my face. I just got up and walked in the opposite direction along the beach without saying a word. How could this happen? After all, she herself confessed her love for me. We have been inseparable for the last four years. Was I such a fool? I felt tears running down my cheeks as I slowly walked along the shore. I soon came across one of the bars that were set up around the fires and walked up to it. Do you have pure rum? I asked. We offer beer and punch, answered the bartender. I took out two $20 bills and placed them on the counter. And now, the bartender nodded, took a bottle of rum from the box, and poured it into a plastic glass for me. I drank half the contents in one gulp, feeling the rum burn my throat. Now what makes you drink like that, if I may ask? asked the bartender. I just proposed to my girlfriend, and she turned me down in front of her whole family, I said, drinking the rest. The bartender immediately poured me another drink. Give me a beer too, I wheezed. He handed me the bottle. Let me give you some advice, the bartender said, handing me a beer. Never fall in love, it always hurts. I wandered further along the beach and found a place next to a tree where I could sit and think. It must have been more than an hour before I heard the loudspeaker announce that it was time to return to the mainland. I waited until most of the people had boarded, and, not wanting to be alone on this island, I decided to return to the ship. When I approached the pier, Beth and her sisters stood at the gangway, looking for me with their eyes. Seeing me, Beth ran towards me, but I raised my hand to stop her. Beth, I just want to be alone, I said. She tried to grab my hand, but I gently pushed her away. Please, Beth, give me some space. On the way back to the hotel, I stayed on the second level by the small bar and stayed away from Beth and her family, who I noticed were sitting below. I drank as fast as I could, but after a while the bartender started taking my orders, saying he didn't want me to throw up on his boat. At one point, Beth's mom came up to talk to me, but saw that I was too drunk and left. The ride back to the hotel was a blur, and I was in a different van than Beth. As soon as we got back, I grabbed my bag and headed to the hotel pool bar. I tipped the bartender to pour me half a bottle of rum, and then went to the beach, finding a secluded spot among the palm trees. I woke up at dawn feeling like the dead. I spent the night leaning against a palm tree surrounded by bushes and trees. My head was pounding and my mouth was so dry it felt like the Sahara Desert. I wandered back to the pool and noticed a garden hose that was being used to water the plants. I knew drinking this water was a bad idea, but I didn't care. I turned on the water and drank as much as I could, then poured it over my head, hoping to come to my senses a little. So what now? Beth was the one, the love of my life. 
No one could compare with her neither in appearance, nor in intelligence, nor in character. I was lost. I didn't want to see Beth or her family, but I had no choice. I couldn't afford to rent a separate room or just leave. There were two days left until the end of the trip. I gathered all my strength and headed to the room. I knocked and Sister Beth opened the door. God bless, we didn't know where you were. We were looking for you, she exclaimed. I walked in, and although it was still early, everyone was already on their feet in the common room. Beth's eyes were red, and she looked very upset. Ben, where have you been? she asked. I spent the night on the beach. I needed time to think. Look, I'm sorry, but I feel terrible. Would you mind if I just take a shower and get some sleep? Nobody objected, and I headed to the bathroom. I slept until evening. Around six in the evening, I woke up to someone sitting next to me on the bed. It was Beth, looking at me with concern. Ben, I'm so sorry. I ruined the most beautiful and romantic moment of my life, she said. Beth, you have nothing to apologize for. I was wrong. I guess I confused the fact that I'm head over heels in love with you with the fact that you're in love with me too. I was wrong, but I would like to understand exactly what I misunderstood. I love you. I love you more than I could ever imagine loving anyone. I suddenly became angry. Then why, Beth? What the hell? We have known each other since childhood and have been living together for the last three years. I thought you wanted to be together. Was I just a fuck buddy? She was crying. No, I was just surprised. I didn't know what to say. Sorry for ruining everything. She was sobbing. I couldn't help myself, I hugged her, and she snuggled up to me. Look, Beth, I understand this might surprise you, but I need to know. Do you want to marry me or not? She hesitated. We need honesty, Beth. I need to know. A big part of me really wants it, but another part of me is just afraid. Why? First of all, I have seen many marriages fall apart. My parents divorced when my mom caught my dad with his mistress, and many of my friend's parents went through the same thing. And even though I know you hate cheaters, it would kill me if you did that. I used to get jealous knowing you were dating other girls after we broke up. I will never cheat on you, Beth, I swear. Looking back, I realize I made a mistake by letting you leave at school. I thought I was making the right choice, and that you would be happier. I know you've dated other guys, too. You weren't a virgin when we started dating in college, and I'm okay with that. It was just Jack, no one else. But there's something else, and I'm not good at explaining it. I know that you love me, and that I love you. I know you've never cheated on your girlfriends, and I don't think you'll cheat on me. She fell silent and took a deep breath. I'm afraid I'll cheat on you. I was surprised and asked, Why, have you already? No. I wasn't with anyone. The fact is that I only had two men. I'm only 22 years old. Most of my friends hang out and meet guys every week. What if later I feel like I miss something? I know this sounds selfish. It's really selfish. But I don't want to have any regrets about the past or hide anything from you. After a minute, she added, And second, I have dreams and goals. That's why I let Jack go. I just got my degree and I want to use it and not become a housewife. I have dreams and goals too, Beth, but I want us to achieve them together. I can't imagine them without you. So what should we do? Don't know. We lay in each other's arms, and after a while we got up and went to dinner. It was awkward, but we tried to keep the conversation casual and avoid the elephant in the room. Later that evening I walked alone on the beach thinking about her words and what I could do. Did I want to stay with Beth? Absolutely. Did I want to spend my whole life with her? Definitely. Could I go back to a normal relationship? Probably not. We went too far and I wanted more. Finally, I came up with a crazy idea. I wasn't happy, but it seemed like a way to give Beth the confidence to accept my offer, and I never thought she'd take advantage of it. I returned to my room and tore off a piece of hotel stationery. On the page I wrote, Get out of prison. This gives you the right to break your marital vows once. 
I won't ask why, with whom, or any details. After this, we won't discuss it anymore. The only conditions are that you must use protection and be tested afterwards, and it will only be once. I folded the paper and put it in the ring box, then went to look for Beth. She was alone, sitting on a chair, looking out at the ocean, with the sounds of the hotel orchestra mixing with the sound of the waves. Hi, can I join you? I asked. She patted the chair next to her. She was crying. Ben, I love you. I want to be with you always. Please ask me again, and I promise I will give you the answer. Can we go for a walk? I took her hand, and we walked along the beach. After a while, I stopped and took her face in my hands. Beth, I love you so much. I can't let you go. I pulled out the box and handed it to her. She opened it and saw a note at the top. What does it mean? She asked. It means what it says, my love. I know you're afraid of regrets, and I know that you hate cheating and are afraid of becoming a cheater. So I'm giving you permission, one time, if you ever feel like you're missing out on something, so that you have a chance to have that experience. You have to tell me about this in advance, and this is only once, but otherwise. She was silent for a minute. Ben, I can't imagine how much love you must have for me. I'm so lucky. I promise that I will become the best wife in the world. I love you so much. With these words, she put the ring on her finger. Yesterday. San Francisco is beautiful in October. Many people come here in the summer expecting sunny California and find themselves disappointed by the fog and coolness. In fact, this is the best time to visit. We drove up from Chicago to celebrate Beth's 31st birthday. The kids stayed with her sister for the weekend and we booked a hotel room. With two active kids, ages six and four, spending time together is a luxury and I was going to take full advantage of it. We checked into the hotel, had dinner at a nice restaurant, went to see a musical, had a couple of cocktails afterwards, and now enjoy the view from the bar on the top floor of our hotel. I reflected on the past eight years with my amazing wife and couldn't be happier. After graduating from university, I found a good job and we moved to Elmhurst, a suburb of Chicago. Beth also soon got a job. The first couple of years were difficult, but we managed by supporting each other and gradually saved enough money to think about having a child. Matthew was born around the same time I got a better position. After Sarah was born two years later, we were able to buy a small house where we have lived for the past six years. Life was wonderful. What are you thinking about? Beth asked, noticing that I was thinking. I thought how lucky I am and how happy I am, I replied with a smile. Well, how about we finish our drinks and I'll show you how lucky you are, she said suggestively. You can't ask the same question twice, I chuckled. As soon as the door of the room closed behind us, I pulled her towards me. She felt so natural in my arms, our lips merged in a kiss. I ran my hands down her arms, then she used her hands to grab my buttocks, and I put my hands on her hips and pulled her towards me. She still looked amazing at 31. She took care of her body, exercised regularly, and ate healthy. Her breasts had barely lost their shape, and there was no noticeable postpartum fat. To me, she would always look great even if she weighed 20 kilograms more, but she kept herself in shape for her own sake, and I was a grateful witness to this. While I was kissing her neck, I felt her take off her shoes and begin to pull my shirt out of my pants. Our tongues were still intertwined when I ran my hand along her thigh, one hand in front, the other behind, and felt the heat between her legs. Will we make it to the bed? She asked with a playful smile. I gently picked her up in my arms, as if on that very first wedding night, and felt her body relax in my arms. She laughed, her laugh was light, musical, like the ringing of a bell, and a mischievous smile appeared on her face. It was that very moment when the whole world around seemed to disappear, leaving only the two of us. Slowly, with tender care, I carried her to the bed, feeling her breathing become regular and calm. Carefully placing her on the edge of the bed, I noticed how her legs were slightly hanging over the edge and thoughtfully ran my hand over her calves. Her skin was soft, warm, and at that moment it seemed even more tender and fragile to me. I began to slowly massage her feet, 
feeling the tension gradually leaving her body. She sighed quietly, barely audible, but it was enough for me to understand that she felt good, she felt comfortable and relaxed next to me. My hands gently and leisurely rose higher to her knees, which I touched with a light stroking, a barely perceptible touch. Her breathing changed, became a little deeper, and she closed her eyes, as if surrendering to these moments of peace and intimacy. I watched her, trying to catch her every emotion, every response to my touch. When I lifted her dress, exposing the delicate skin of her thighs, she looked at me with slight embarrassment, but there was not a shadow of doubt in her gaze, only trust and a warm smile. This moment was so intimate that it seemed as if the whole world had gone silent, leaving us alone in this room. I pressed my lips to her legs, touching them with light, almost weightless kisses, feeling her breathing quicken every moment. Her hands, which had been lying relaxed before, suddenly reached out to my hair, gently touching the back of my head. I caught how she slightly bit her lip, trying not to give away her emotions, but her eyes spoke for her. She was completely immersed in these sensations. I continued to tease her, as if playing, awakening her desire, but slowly, giving her the opportunity to enjoy every moment. Please, she whispered softly, and there was a request in her voice that could not be ignored. I just smiled and continued, slowly, enjoying every second of this intimacy. Her hands tightened on my shoulders, and her breathing became even more rapid. It was not a rush, not a thirst, but a moment of pure pleasure and trust in each other. When I finally let her go, allowing her to rest a little, we laughed quietly together. This laughter was not just a reaction to what was happening, it was an expression of the unity and harmony that we felt with each other. We lay next to each other for several minutes, hugging each other, enjoying each other's warmth. Her fingers slowly stroked my back, as if trying to remember every detail, every sensation. Should we take off our clothes now? She finally suggested, laughing, and I couldn't help but smile back. We slowly undressed, but it was more than just preparing for the next step. It was another moment when an invisible connection seemed to run between us, when each of us felt completely open and vulnerable to the other, but at the same time absolutely protected and beloved. We went to bed, hugging each other again, and I felt her hands slowly begin to explore me. She was gentle, her touches were light, but each of them filled me with warmth. For several minutes we just lay next to each other, touching each other, without saying a word. There was no need to speak everything was already said in our gestures, in our breathing, in the way our bodies felt each other. When her lips finally approached my body, I felt a wave of warmth run through it. She was careful, gentle, as if she was afraid to hurt me, but her every gesture was so clear and conscious that I felt every particle of that moment. After we had allowed ourselves some time to rest and catch our breath, I gently laid her on her back and, taking her hands, lifted her legs so that her calves rested on my shoulders. She looked at me with a slight smile, and we both laughed quietly, as if this moment was part of some secret joke between us, understood only by the two of us. When it was all over, we, exhausted, could only clean up a little and fell back into bed with each other. This morning. I woke up the next morning to sunlight streaming through the windows and Beth curled up next to me. Just looking at her made me happy. I lay there enjoying the moment until she finally moved. It's so good to sleep after such intense sex, she said with a smile. Are you ready to go to breakfast or would you rather order room service? I asked. Let's order. I'm not ready to get dressed, she replied with a sly smile. We enjoyed a lazy morning sipping coffee and eating muffins in our room. After breakfast, we sat in silence, each immersed in our own thoughts. I thought about last night, about our trips together, and how I never get tired of it. But when I looked at Beth, she looked serious, as if she was thinking about something worrying. She glanced at me occasionally, as if gathering her thoughts. Everything is fine? I asked. Ben, I need to talk to you. I was looking for the right moment all weekend while we were away from the children, but I never found it. I had a sudden feeling of anxiety. It doesn't bode well when your wife says, we need to talk. But I had no idea what it could be about. She took a deep breath, stood up, and took something out of her bag. In her hands I saw a folded sheet of paper. 
She sat back on the bed and handed it to me. I unfolded the paper, and at first I couldn't figure out what it was. Then I saw a hotel paper with the words, Get Out of Prison, written on it. My heart sank, my breathing became unsteady, and I felt everything begin to turn white before my eyes. Ben, Ben, Beth looked at me with concern, holding my face in her hands. I came to my senses and realized that I had fainted. My head was throbbing with pain. Beth, what? There was panic in my voice. I wrote this piece of paper so long ago. I thought she threw it away. I thought we were happy. She was happy? Or was it an illusion? Beth was crying. Ben, I'm sorry. Forget I brought it up. No, I can't. Beth, why? I thought we were happy. I don't understand. Just forget it. I shouldn't have brought this up. I need to get out of here, I said, starting to quickly get dressed. Ben, wait. I wanted to talk about it. I didn't know what to feel, but at that moment it was mostly anger and shock. I couldn't speak. She followed me around the room in her robe, crying and begging me to talk to her. I packed my things as quickly as I could and left the room. I just started walking. My head was in chaos. After all these years together, after two children and what I thought was a happy marriage, I suddenly find out that my wife is unhappy. How else can you explain her words? And who is this man? Someone from work. Some young guy with a toned body and plus size. Someone from a dating site. Or maybe she was just planning to meet someone at the bar. Did I do something wrong? Am I really not satisfied with her anymore? My phone rang. I looked at the screen, saw it was Beth, and turned it off. Regardless, our marriage will never be the same. She said, forget it, but how is that possible? Pandora has already released all her demons. It can't be taken back. Even if I say, let's forget, I will always know that she is unhappy, that she carries a grudge, and I will always wonder if she is now cheating on me behind my back. And if I agree to her request, then perhaps she will satisfy her desire, but then the resentment will already be in me, and I will always think whether once is enough for her, or is this just the beginning. There was a small park ahead, and I sat down on a bench. Does this mean the end of our marriage? Can it still be good? I remembered that the note was still in my pocket, took it out, and read it again. Get out of prison. This gives you the right to break your marital vows once. I won't ask why, with whom, or any details. After this, we won't discuss it anymore. The only conditions are that you must use protection and be tested afterwards, and it will only be once. When I wrote this, I was too idealistic. I never thought she would take advantage of it. I thought our love would be strong enough, the sex good enough, and our connection strong enough that she would never want to cheat. I was wrong. What now? Now what? As disgusting as it was, I reread those words. I promised her a free pass, no questions asked. I made it clear that we would remain married and that I would not consider this cheating. However, I never said that it wouldn't affect our relationship, perhaps to the point of desperation. What now? I covered my face with my hands and cried. San Francisco. I found a liquor store near the park and decided to drown my thoughts in alcohol. But by lunchtime I could no longer stand it and switch to water. I needed to talk to someone, so I called my friend Steve first. But judging by his advice to divorce that bitch, it became clear to me that he himself might be happy to be the guy she was considering for her affair. So I called Samantha to get a woman's perspective. She was more of Beth's friend, but we still talked. Samantha immediately realized that I was drunk and simply advised me not to make hasty decisions and give Beth a chance to explain herself. I returned to the hotel at seven in the evening. I was already thinking about driving to the airport and catching the next flight home to Chicago, but after a day of thinking, I decided that I made a promise and I was going to keep it, no matter the consequences. Beth was waiting for me. It was clear from her that she had a difficult day. When I entered the room, she looked up and began to speak, but I interrupted her. Beth, you don't have to say anything. Nine years ago, I made you a promise, a free pass, no questions asked. I promised not to ask why, with whom, or any details other than when. 
and I intend to keep my promise. Although I didn't make it clear, I would prefer that you not have sex with someone in our home or in our bed, but if you insist, let me know and I won't be there during that time. So when? She just looked at me. My monotone voice and lack of emotion clearly confused her. Then I said, let's forget about it. I love you and don't want to ruin our marriage. I see that you are in pain. Samantha called me and said that you spoke to her and that you were very upset. It's too late to forget this, Beth. I've been replaying this in my head all day. The fact that you even brought this up already hurts, and I'm not going to pretend it doesn't. And this after an amazing night together. I feel like my whole life is falling apart. Nine years ago, I made a promise to you, but to be honest, I never expected that you would want to take advantage of that promise. I thought that we were fine and that this would be enough for you. But I was wrong, and here we are. I understand that it may seem unfair that I'm upset, but I can't change how I feel. So please just tell me when and if I need to leave the house. And then I'll take a shower and sleep on the couch. Please, Ben, this is not what I wanted. I understand that I chose the wrong moment. There wasn't a good time to discuss this. Let me explain. Right now, I really don't want to hear who it is and what they have that I don't have. It's not what you think. Stop. Let me ask you one question, and I ask you to be honest. Have you ever cheated on me during our marriage? I looked her straight in the eyes, and to my surprise, she looked offended. No, Ben, I didn't cheat on you, she said coldly. Fine. Then I'll ask the question again, when, where? And my answer again is, let's just forget about it. I'm emotionally exhausted and I feel bad about all this, but I won't leave you alone until you answer my question. When did you plan to do this? Next weekend, I'll leave on Friday and return on Tuesday. I'll be out of town. She lowered her eyes. It's clear. Good night. I started to feel sick. I didn't want to be in the same room with her. After taking a shower, I saw that Beth was lying on the bed and looking at me, but she knew that I did not want to talk. I took a blanket out of the closet and settled down on the sofa. I lay awake all night, experiencing bouts of rage, fear, grief, and confusion. I knew that if I said no, she would refuse it. But what will this give? I will break the promise that made her agree to marry me. She will hate me forever and rightfully stop trusting my word. If I let her do this, will I be able to get over it later? At that moment, it didn't seem that way to me. But perhaps over time, she offered to explain, Do I want to know? Will this make it better or worse? The worst thing about this whole situation is my own fault. If I had given her more time then, she probably would have come to this on her own. But I was naive and in love. I really and truly thought this would never happen. Should have, could have. With the first rays of the sun, I finally decided on what to do. I didn't want her to do it, but I didn't see any other way out that wouldn't deprive me of my honor and make me a bad person. If I show how much I hate the idea, it will be the same as saying no. At the same time, I wasn't going to push her into ending up in someone else's arms. So I decided to stay in the middle except that she would use the free pass, but nothing more. When the sky began to lighten, I stood up. It was Beth's birthday. I looked at the bed and saw that she was lying with her eyes open. Happy birthday. Ben, we need to talk. We could always talk. Please let me explain. Beth, I love you more than life. I've been thinking about this all night, and I think you should go. I don't want to know the details right now. Maybe one day I'll ask, and if you still want to explain, we can discuss it. For now, I want you to know that I will keep my word. Make your plans, but I don't want to talk about it anymore now. I was not at all in the mood to continue our holiday weekend, but I pulled myself together. Maybe we should go have breakfast, I suggested. We got ready and went for breakfast. We saw the sights and accomplished everything we had planned for that day. I tried not to show my anxiety, although I'm sure it was still showing. She was very attentive to me, even more than usual. That night she tried to focus on me in bed, doing everything she knew I liked. My connection with her body was so strong that, despite my difficult thoughts, 
she always managed to excite me. Weekend. The week before this weekend turned out to be strange. It was like knowing that you were going to die and you only had four days left to live. On the first night after returning home, Beth said, Ben, you're my only love, and you can have me the way you want. I'm completely yours. I thought, how does this relate to the fact that in a few days she will be someone else's? But I didn't want to spoil what was probably our last truly exclusive time together. I was completely immersed in work during the day. In the evenings things were a little awkward as we both tried to pretend that everything was normal. Beth would take the kids to her friend Samantha's or her sister's every evening, and we would go to concerts, shows, or dances. Every night we had sex, just like the days when we were younger. On Thursday, I came home from work to find her preparing a delicious steak dinner with wine and candles, dressed head to toe in a gorgeous dress. The children are with my sister. I thought we could just stay home today. Do you want to change clothes? She asked. As I walked into the bedroom to change my clothes, I noticed a bag on her side of the closet. Even though I knew I didn't have to and didn't want to do it, I couldn't help but look within. Did I expect to see sexy lingerie, condoms, sex toys? There were just light clothes and two swimsuits, but nothing special. The lingerie was cute, but not too sexy. Judging by the contents, I realized that she was going to go somewhere warm with water. I put on the appropriate clothes for our romantic evening and again tried to push away the thoughts of the day ahead. We had a great evening talking about a variety of topics, only avoiding the elephant in the room. One of our main advantages is the ability to talk about everything. It was eating away at me that I had been caught off guard by her request, which meant we hadn't really discussed everything. After dinner, we sat on the couch with glasses of wine and started kissing. I want to show you how much I love you, she whispered, kneeling in front of me and unzipping my pants. We sat next to each other, feeling the special closeness that has always been between us, but this evening it seemed even more tangible. The atmosphere in the room was filled with warm light, the light aroma of her favorite perfume and soft music in the background, creating the perfect mood for a relaxing evening together. She slowly pulled her legs up onto the sofa, sitting closer to me, and our eyes met. Her eyes sparkled with tenderness and something more something that always attracted me to her. I knew she felt the same. Our hands intertwined easily and her fingers gently touched my palm. This gesture was so simple, but it had so much meaning. I felt her touch penetrate straight into my heart, filling me with warm emotions. Without saying a word, she leaned closer and our lips met in a light, barely perceptible kiss. It was a touch full of tenderness and it lasted only a moment, but behind it was hidden something more. We enjoyed this short moment as if stretching it out, slowly, as if the whole world had stopped for the two of us. There was always something special in these short touches, not just physical closeness, but deep mutual understanding, as if at that moment we were talking to each other without words. She smiled slightly, her eyes sparkling with playfulness, and it made me feel even more connected to her. My hand slid to her waist, touching gently and confidently, and she allowed me to feel her warmth. This touch was like a quiet conversation, full of trust and mutual attraction. She snuggled closer, and I felt her breath on my skin slow, and even filling the air around us with warmth. After a few moments of silence, she stood up, as if there was a special purpose in her movements. I followed her every step, feeling the excitement growing inside me. She walked up to the sofa and, turning over her shoulder, gave me a look full of promises. There was something exciting in her eyes that kindled an even greater fire in her soul. She looked truly mesmerizing in her dress, which hugged her figure, highlighting every line. Her movements were slow and graceful, like a dancer's, and I couldn't take my eyes off her. At that moment, everything around ceased to matter only her, her delicate aroma and her playful smile. I stood up and walked over to her. My hands found her waist, and I hugged her, feeling how her warmth was transferred to me. She leaned back slightly, trusting me, and I felt something special spark between us. Our bodies easily moved in the same rhythm, as if it were an old, long-studied dance, where every step was familiar and desired. She smiled tenderly, 
and we again plunged into this amazing moment when the whole world seemed to disappear, leaving only the two of us immersed in the silence and warmth of each other. We were immersed in this moment, and every gesture, every look was filled with meaning. We took our time, enjoying every second, feeling how every breath, every touch binds us even more tightly. It was that moment when words are not needed to express what you really feel. We lay together on the sofa for a long time until she finally raised this issue. I can still give it up, she said, looking at me expectantly. I didn't answer. Ben, you are my love. I don't want to do anything that will hurt you or our marriage. Beth, I gave you my word years ago. No questions asked. I hoped you would never take up this offer, but you had every right to expect me to keep my promise. And although I don't understand it and will have to work with it later, I think you need to do it. It's not what you think. Can I explain? Not what I think? What could this mean? She says she loves only me and yet asks to be with someone else. I was completely confused. I don't want to ruin our last night. We'll talk about it when you get back. What time is your flight tomorrow? Do you want me to drive you to the airport? My flight is at 10.30 in the morning, and yes, that would be good. Can I call you? I thought about it. Do I want her to call me or not? If you get a chance, I'd love to hear from you. I'll call you every night. We sat in silence for a while. Finally, she said playfully, well, how about we try it on the kitchen table? The kids were left with my parents, who agreed to watch them until Saturday morning. Getting her to the airport wasn't easy. We kissed goodbye at the curb, and she walked into the terminal. I felt like a part of me was dying. When I got back to work, curiosity got the better of me, and I checked the list of flights leaving at 10.30 am from Chicago. I knew she might have a layover, but I looked through the list anyway. There were a few short flights, but I saw a direct flight from Chicago to Honolulu leaving at exactly 10.30 am, and I knew that was it. The flight was nine and a half hours long, so she would arrive at 8 p.m. our time, 4 p.m. Honolulu time. This was an extra blow because we had talked about going to Hawaii together for a second honeymoon, and now she was going to spend it with someone else. I couldn't concentrate on my work. My boss even asked if I was okay and suggested I leave early. As 8 p.m. approached, I became increasingly nervous. Had they arrived yet? Were they on the flight together? If it was one of her co-workers, it would make sense. Or was she meeting him at the Honolulu airport? Who was this man? I pulled out a bottle of whiskey and tried to distract myself from my thoughts. The clock struck 8 p.m., and that time passed. Finally, around 10 p.m., my phone rang. It was Beth. Hello, I answered, and I could hear how my voice sounded hoarse and a little drunk. Ben, are you okay? You sound weird. I heard the worry and background music in her voice. I'm completely fine. How was the flight? I asked, trying to keep my voice calm. It took a long time, but I got there. Are you sure you're okay? Your voice sounds like you've been drinking. Yes, I drank. I'll probably go to bed soon. So, is he there with you? This question literally burst out of me, and I could not restrain myself. He's here, yes. We were going to go to dinner. I think you need to go to bed. I don't want to talk to you when you're drunk. You're getting too emotional. I wanted to explode, to throw out on her everything that had accumulated over the past few days, all the pain, anger, fear. But what would that do? She's already there, with another man, and this conversation won't change anything. I understood that if I started to quarrel now, it would only make the situation worse. I didn't want to push her away even more. Okay, Beth, I love you. I love you too, Ben. Good night. I was planning to stay awake, but the alcohol took its toll and I soon fell into a restless sleep. It was a difficult four days, perhaps the most difficult of my life. I took the children to the playground and spent Saturday and Sunday with them. On Monday, I dropped them off at daycare and tried to focus on work. Beth called me every evening at about 10 p.m. Chicago time. It became obvious that she was indeed in Hawaii from the things she mentioned. The conversations were short. I didn't ask for details, and she didn't offer them. 
Although I tried to discern her emotional state from her tone, it was difficult to understand. She always said, I love you, at the end of the call. It was impossible not to replay in my head her fucking with her lover in all the positions in which we made love last week. I knew it was all just in my head, but I couldn't do anything about it. On Monday, she called as usual and asked if I could pick her up tomorrow, I agreed. After that, she was slightly tanned. She had beautiful golden skin when she threw her bag in the trunk of my car and got in on Tuesday night. Or maybe her glow was coming from something else. When she tried to kiss me on the lips, I reflexively turned away and her lips pressed against my cheek. She looked a little surprised, but said nothing. The drive home was mostly quiet, just chatting. You look nice, I said. Thank you. I'm a little tanned. How was the flight? Good, but it took a long time. The kids will be happy to see you. She realized that I hadn't mentioned whether I was happy to see her. We took the children from her sister. She picked them up from kindergarten because I had to go to the airport after work. The children were really happy to see their mother. After we got home, put the kids to bed, and got ourselves cleaned up, we sat together in our bed. Do you want to talk about this? She asked. I felt a cold bitterness fill my chest and throat. Do you still love me? I asked. More than ever. Then no. Maybe later. She started hugging me. I felt my body tense up. You need to get checked before we have sex. It sounded pretty cold. She pulled away. Fine. After a few minutes, she began to get up. I need to adapt to this time zone. I don't want to sleep. I'll go watch TV in the living room. She did not return that night. The next day, she told me that she had gone to the doctor for a blood test and that the results would be ready in one, two weeks. I knew that was not all. The thought of intimacy with her no longer attracted me. I hoped it would pass. Almost two weeks later, she said everything was fine and showed me the test results. It was just a fresh reminder that my wife had slept with another man. That evening she wanted to have sex. I tried to want to, but I just couldn't. Thanksgiving and Christmas kept us busy with family and friends. Apart from Steve and Samantha, no one else knew what happened. At various holiday parties, I kept my eyes peeled to see if anyone was paying special attention to Beth. She was getting her usual share of flirting, and I noticed that Steve was paying more attention to her than usual. But I knew it was just because he wanted to get her into bed. I decided he wasn't such a good friend. No one else stood out. We still slept in the same bed and cuddled, but we hadn't had sex since that weekend. Beth tried to start several times, but was already desperate. This was the longest break we had ever experienced from two, three times a week to nothing it was hard on both of us. After the new year, I finally approached her. Beth, I know the last couple of months have been difficult. I know I started this with this damn free card, and it's not fair of me to blame you for accepting what I offered. I love you, Ben. Please forgive me for what I did. You have nothing to apologize for. Please forgive me for the way I reacted to this. I understand that you are upset and I am ready to wait, but we have to work on it. I need to ask, are you still seeing him or are you talking? No, I haven't seen him since that weekend and I don't plan to. We talked on the phone a couple of times. I can tell you about these calls, but to do so, I will need to explain more about the whole situation. Beth, I don't know how to heal from this. Maybe we should live separately for a while. Should I go see a consultant? Beth started crying and hugged me. Ben, I don't want to lose you. I'll do whatever you want. After a pause, she added, do you want to sleep with someone else? Will it help? Beth, I'm not interested in anyone, and vengeful sex won't help us get back together. That night, as we lay together, I thought about my situation. I love this woman, there is no doubt about it. But will we ever be able to survive what I brought on myself? We made love for the first time in a long time. It wasn't bad, but something was missing. Perhaps there always will be. Beth High School. Ben was my first love. I fell in love with him the day we met. He was so gallant, stopping to help a scared girl who was lost. He was patient, 
kind and caring when I needed it. He gave me what I needed, not always what I wanted. I wanted him badly and was ready to lose my virginity to him, but he always held me back. He made me tremble with just his hands and lips, but he never took my virginity. He was too much of a gentleman and said there was no need to rush. It had to be something very special and with someone very special. It hurt terribly when we broke up. I thought I was going to die. My mind understood all his reasons and explanations. Long distance relationships don't work. I need to grow. He didn't want to deprive me of my high school experience. If we were meant to be together, we would be later. My heart didn't get the message. It was furious with him. I joined the cheerleading team and met Jack. He was the star of the football team and came up to me after practice. Hi, I'm Jack, he said with a big smile. I know, I'm Beth Byrne. He was definitely hot. Broad shoulders, light brown hair, blue eyes, and a ton of muscles. Beth Byan, maybe I should just call you Bibai. I blushed all over. So, Bibai, what are you doing after the game on Friday? How about we go to Pete's party? That's how we started dating. Jack was completely different from Ben. We didn't talk about deep topics, and sometimes the conversations were strained. He wasn't as elegant as Ben, if that's the right description. He was much more physically aggressive and made me lose my virginity a month after we started dating. I didn't like that it happened after a party where we were both drunk, so the special moment was ruined, and he didn't use a condom, so I was in a panic until my next period. His lovemaking was much rougher and more active compared to Ben's gentle and patient style. But over time I fell in love with Jack. He certainly had honor. His entire family were military men, and they instilled this philosophy in him from childhood. He was just a good-hearted, real American with a sexy body. The problems with Jack started when I started talking about applying to the same colleges. He didn't plan on going to college, his plan was to become a Navy SEAL, and he wanted to go into the Navy straight out of high school. He wanted me to go with him, hinting at marriage. Part of me wanted it, but most of me knew that I would never be happy with this choice. I just couldn't imagine myself being married at 18, with children at 19, a housewife moving from base to base, constantly worrying about my man. I had dreams and goals, aspirations for a career. We just weren't right for each other. The breakup was difficult. He said he would always love me, and I said the same. I promised him that I would always be there if he needed me. Beth is a college. I was surprised but delighted to meet Ben when I arrived in Ohio. I was still getting over my breakup with Jack, but I really needed a good friend. We could always talk when we were together, and that hasn't changed. I still kept in touch with Jack and followed his progress through boot camp and his entry into the SEAL program. He said he missed me. By Christmas, Ben and I were best friends again, and I invited him to a get-together organized by my mother. At one point, I stood watching my uncle and his wife of 30 years hug and kiss, and thought about how beautiful it was. Ben came up behind me, turned me towards him, and kissed me on the lips. I felt an instant jolt run through my body, then the kiss deepened, and I felt my tongue slide across his bottom lip, and then our tongues intertwined. After we pulled away, my sisters embarrassed me by starting to clap. I was glad to have Ben back in my life. For New Year's, we went to my friend Samantha's. Her parents had a big house, and she invited a few close friends to stay the night in one of the spare rooms. As Ben and I threw our bags into the room with one bed, we looked at each other and started giggling knowing where this would lead. We danced all night, and I was thrilled with anticipation. A lot of time had passed, and my hormones were at their limit. If he wanted, I would happily go to bed early. But we made it until midnight. I couldn't wait any longer and pulled him upstairs. I made him take off his clothes while I watched. I had seen every part of his body before, but two years had passed, and I had never seen him completely naked standing in front of me. He wasn't as muscular as Jack, but he was slim and sexy. I needed to get closer. When he approached me, I examined him. He was just as excited as I was. When it was my turn, I gave him the best dance. Here is a milder version of the passage. My thighs were wet with excitement. 
I sat on his lap and pressed myself against him, feeling the warmth of his body. It was an incredible feeling. Each of our closeness caused excitement and awe. I changed position, being on top, and he hugged me, whispering words full of passion. We moved together as one, feeling close and connected. He was there, and it was exactly what I needed at that moment. Our feelings grew, consuming us completely, until we reached the peak, feeling waves of pleasure. I missed this. I would never have confessed to Jack, but Ben was the best lover, hands down. Our bodies were simply made for each other. Beth proposal. I graduated from my undergraduate degree and my parents took us to Cancun to celebrate. I was deciding whether to go to graduate school or take advantage of some of the job offers I had. But at that moment, I just wanted to have fun in the sun. Ben had just finished his master's degree, so he also needed a break. We were having a great time until he proposed. We took an excursion to a small island nearby to snorkel, swim, and sunbathe on the beach. That evening, the guides lit fires and roasted meat, and drinks also flowed freely. We were sitting in a circle, enjoying each other's company, when Ben completely overwhelmed me. When he got down on one knee and asked me to marry him, I was shocked. I didn't expect this and was completely confused. I reacted incorrectly and just ran away. My sister attacked me. What's wrong with you? She screamed. I cried. Don't know. Is Ben okay? What do you think? He was embarrassed and angry. I don't blame him. He probably left to look for a woman who isn't a complete idiot. My whole family was angry with me. Everyone knew how much we loved each other, and the proposal was expected by everyone except me. They asked me if I loved him. Of course I do. We are kindred spirits. Then I needed to decide something before I ruined everything completely. I tried to make it up to Ben that night, but he was rightfully angry and wanted to be alone. I spent time wondering why I was so confused, other than the surprise. First of all, I loved Ben, without question, more than I could ever imagine. I would die for him. Secondly, I only planned to get married once. I'd seen enough divorces, including my parents, and I wanted to be absolutely sure. Thirdly, I had just graduated and didn't want to become a housewife and soccer mom. I wanted a career. Fourth, I only had Jack and Ben. What if I'm attracted to someone else in the future? I was not one of those who cheat, and I did not want to create such conditions for myself. When Ben calmed down the next day, I explained my worries to him. I was afraid that he would reject me, and this caused me such panic. I decided that my fears were nothing compared to the desire to be with Ben forever, and I would beg him to marry me as soon as I saw him. He surprised me by offering me a free exit card. I almost tore it on the spot. I had no intention of ever using it, but it was such a sweet gesture and symbol of the depth of his love for me that I kept it as a reminder. A year later, we got married in a beautiful ceremony. This was my dream come true. Beth present three months after that weekend. My marriage is in trouble. I hurt the person I love. I made a huge mistake. After the new year, I hoped that everything would return to the wonderful state it was before. But Ben still looks exhausted. We started having sex again, but it's just sex. We don't make love and Ben isn't fully present. It's just vanilla sex. He never even gives me pleasure, and his kisses are devoid of the passion that was before. Everything is mechanical. I find myself crying afterwards while he sleeps. I don't know what to do. He said he didn't want to know about that weekend and shut down every time I brought it up. I suggested that he have sex with someone else. We discussed consultations with a psychologist, and the worst thing was that he started talking about living separately. I took the initiative and contacted a marriage counselor who was recommended by my friends. I met with her alone at the first consultation and explained our situation. I was glad that she didn't judge me or Ben and was willing to work with us. I told Ben about the consultant and he agreed to meet with her. We're in her office. After the introduction, we begin to discuss our history and what led up to that weekend. She suggests that in order to move on, Ben needs to hear what happened and why. He reluctantly agrees, realizing that otherwise our marriage could collapse. Beth, why don't you explain? Take your time. 
Start with what led you to want to take this permission, she says, guiding me. The man was Jack. I see a shadow of pain flash across Ben's face and my stomach tightens. You know that we stayed in touch all these years as friends. Remember he got married five years ago. I was happy for him. He seemed very in love. They had two sons, and every time we talked, everything seemed to be going well for him. We hadn't spoken for a while when he called me last September. He was depressed. He found out that his wife had been cheating on him for almost the entire marriage. His sons weren't even his. He was in terrible condition. I spoke to him often over the next few weeks to see how he was coping, and it wasn't good. He said he was being deployed to the Middle East in November and hinted that he might not return. Ben, you know that you are the love of my life. But I still have strong feelings for Jack. I see Ben flinch. I don't love him. At least I'm not in love with him. We just have a common history. I knew him to be a good man, and I didn't want some cheating bitch to ruin him and possibly lead him to his death. I remembered that I once said that I would always be by his side. I remembered the permission you gave me and thought I could do something good for him. Ben chimes in. What? Fuck him so that he doesn't break. No. But he was hurt, and I thought a little love might help him. I just thought I had to do something. You know what happened. I knew that he was leaving for military service at the beginning of November, and I was looking for an opportunity to talk to you about it. But we were so busy that the timing didn't seem right, and then I stupidly chose the worst possible moment to start the conversation. I thought I could show you that you were still my one true love before I left, and I tried. I would have canceled the trip if you had asked me to, but you insisted that I go anyway. I guess I thought you were okay with that. Ben looks down at the floor. I didn't agree with it as much as I could have. But I am a man of my word, and what would it do to us if I broke such an important promise? I held myself back from showing you how much it bothered me. Okay, says the consultant. I think you both see that there has been a misunderstanding here. We've been discussing this for a while. Beth, now Ben needs to hear about that weekend. You don't need to describe every detail. Beth, that weekend. During the flight, I kept thinking about Ben. I was worried that he was now alone, lost in thoughts about what I was doing. What the hell am I doing? Is it worth it? Will I be able to somehow influence the situation? I thought I had to try. I arrived in Honolulu around four in the evening, feeling strange after the long flight. Jack said I should text him as soon as I got off the plane and he would pick me up. I freshened up in the toilet and sent a message. Standing on the side of the road, I saw a jeep approaching. He was bigger than I remembered. Service in the Navy SEALs benefited him in this regard. His body was literally bursting in his tight black t-shirt and jeans. I saw the women around me looking at him hungrily, wondering who I was to attract such a handsome man. But when I looked at his face, it was gaunt and wrinkled, and when he took off his sunglasses, his eyes seemed tired. Bye-bye, I'm so glad you came, he forced himself to smile, then pulled me into his arms, almost crushing me and lifting me from the ground. We climbed into his jeep and drove off. He rented a condo near Lanakai, and along the way he gave updates on his wife. He filed for divorce and will probably lose at least half his savings, pension, everything, plus he will have to pay alimony and child support, even though the children are not his, because legally he is still considered their father. He did not object to payments for children. They may not be his by blood, but he became attached to them and loved them. But it was painful to pay this bitch. I was mostly silent as we drove. The condo was located next to a beautiful beach. I took a shower and started getting ready. I was extremely hungry due to the time difference and the bad food I had for lunch on the plane. Let me call my husband before dinner. Of course, Jack frowned. Are you sure your husband doesn't mind you being here? I mean, my life is ruined because of my wife's infidelity, and I wouldn't want to ruin your marriage either. But don't get me wrong, I'm glad you came. I shook off the anxiety I also felt. Ben is the most loving person I know. His love is enough for me to help a friend in need, I hoped. I went out onto the balcony and, 
hearing music coming from the pool, made a call. After dinner, we went out for drinks and dancing. Jack continued to tell stories about how he met his wife and what happened. When he began to plunge into negativity, I invited him to dance. Jack was a wonderful dancer, and I must admit that I loved the feel of his body as we danced back to back. I saw how I made women in the club jealous by having such a man around. By the end of the night, the drinking was taking its toll. After another slow dance, I lifted my head and we kissed. It was passionate and I could feel my body responding. His hand slowly went down and gently squeezed my ass and I let him do it. When we returned to the bar, Jack said, Sorry about that. I shouldn't have kissed you. Everything is fine. My husband knows. Jack raised an eyebrow. We don't exchange partners, if that's what you mean. I've never done anything like this with anyone else, and I've been absolutely faithful to Ben since we started dating seriously. What I want to say is that he knows that I am here with you. He gave me permission to do whatever I needed to do to show you that not all women are mean bitches. Um, you mean anything? Let's see what happens, okay? I love my husband. But I also care about you, and I want to show you that not all women are bad. I smiled, hopefully. You're incredible. We went back to the condo and started kissing again. His strong hands felt amazing on my body as he massaged my breasts and butt through my dress. How about we go to bed and cuddle, I suggested. We took a shower and went to bed. He was only wearing boxers, and I was only wearing panties. When I came out of the bathroom, he was already lying on the bed and looking at me hungrily. I just crawled in next to him, pressed my body against his, and hugged him tightly until I fell asleep. On Saturday, we went to the beach and had fun playing in the water and sunbathing. We joined a game of volleyball, and I loved watching his strong body in action. That evening, after dinner, we drank and talked again. He seemed to feel a little better after sharing some of his pain with me. We showered again, and I went to bed. This time he started stroking my back and legs, then leaned in to kiss me. I ran my hands over his chest, arms, and body. I started to get excited. His hand slid slowly and tentatively up my thigh. He was willing to stop if I wanted him to, but I wasn't going to do that. When his fingers reached my panties, he felt warmth. Our touches became more and more tender and attentive. Every touch seemed filled with feeling, and the tension grew between us, as if we were trying to talk to each other without words. I felt his breathing getting deeper and faster, as if he was waiting for something important. I also could not ignore the electrical connection that arose between us. After a while, I jokingly suggested that perhaps we would be more comfortable if we took off our clothes, and he agreed. We stopped for a moment to get rid of this barrier so that nothing would prevent us from truly feeling each other. When he lay down on the bed, the image of a confident and calm man appeared before me. There was something so natural in his posture, as if his every movement spoke of strength and harmony. I felt excitement and delight as our intimacy became more and more obvious. Our interaction was like a dance in which there was no rush, but only harmony and synchronicity. His every touch resonated in my body, and I knew that this moment was special. We surrendered to our feelings, and soon the atmosphere was filled with quiet sighs and tender words that reflected our state. Smiling at him, I asked, Do you feel better? It was amazing, Bibai. Thank you. I could understand that he was going to make a retaliatory action, but I said, It's okay, Jack. This was for you. Let's just relax. We cuddled up to each other again, like the night before, and fell asleep. On Sunday, we took a helicopter tour of other islands. Jack was clearly feeling better, and I saw his smile become more and more natural. That evening, after dinner, I pleasured him again, and this time he lasted much longer. Monday was our last full day and night together. We went for a couple's massage in the afternoon. We were asked to completely undress and lie under the sheets on nearby massage tables. Two attractive massage therapists came in, a man for me and a woman for Jack. They needed our bodies for about half an hour. It was so relaxing that I almost fell asleep. They then said they were leaving, and it was our turn to continue massaging each other. Jack massaged first. 
He started at my feet and slowly worked his way up each leg. His strong hands felt amazing on my skin and tense muscles. He climbed onto the table to stretch my shoulders. He began to move, and I felt my excitement growing. Finally, he got down and removed the sheet, exposing my bare butt. He applied more oil and massaged it for a long time. Every time he lifted and spread my buttocks, it sent a jolt of pleasure throughout my body. I repeated the same actions on him while he was lying on the table. Then I asked him to turn over. First I applied oil to my breasts, then I straddled his waist and started sliding my breasts up and down his chest. After a few minutes, he put his hands on my butt, guiding my movements. We lay there for a while, relaxing, then went to get ready. Bibai, I liked it. I love that you are here. I love you, he said. His words and gaze frightened me. Jack, you know that I care about you very much, but I don't want to mislead you. You're too good a person for that, and you just went through a terrible experience. I love my husband. My heart and soul belong to him. I'm here for you as your friend, but nothing more. I looked into his eyes until he looked down. It was worth it, he grinned. You are an amazing woman, Bibai. I have never met anyone so caring, generous, and compassionate. Your husband is the happiest man in the world. I thought about Jack. I wasn't going to make him think it was more than that. In my understanding, it was just therapy. Yes, he was a handsome man with a kind heart, and I would be lying if I said he didn't make me lustful. But all my love belonged to my husband. We spent the rest of the day on the beach, walking and talking. On our last night, we went to a very nice restaurant and spent a few hours there and then went out for drinks. That night in bed, we kissed passionately. We both knew it was the last night, so everything felt urgent. I stopped him for a moment and took out a condom, which I put on the bedside table. We had sex. After it rolled to the side, we lay there enjoying the aftertaste. He asked, Did you enjoy it? No, but it's okay. True, I smiled and gently touched his face, calming him down. We were fast asleep. The next day we said goodbye. Bibai, I want you to know that you saved my life. I really don't know what would have happened if you hadn't come to me. The thoughts in my head were very dark. I know that you are returning to your husband. I know you love him. But you will always hold a very special place in my heart. Beth present three months after the weekend. I just finished telling a shortened version of the story to Ben, leaving out the details of the sexual encounters. The consultant helped by interjecting questions and guiding our conversation. Ben remained silent throughout the entire story. Ben, do you have any questions? The consultant asks softly. Have you continued communicating with Jack? No. I made it clear that this was a one-time event. I only spoke to Jack once after that, and it was purely friendly. Was it worth it? I hope. From what I saw and what Jack said, it worked. Was it worth the pain it caused us? I thought for a minute. He said it saved his life. I didn't know it would hit us so hard. If I had known, to be honest, I would have made a different choice. It may sound selfish, but you are my heart and soul, Ben. I reached out and took his hands. Was he? Was he better than me? I mean, I know he's a damn seal. Yes, he is an attractive man. But no, Ben, he wasn't better than you. Our physical contact was like therapy. At least that's how I saw it. Love is what makes sex magical. Was this really the last time, Beth? What if Jack asks you again? What if you have a desire in a year or two? Darling, I love only you. It was a one-time event forever. I don't know what to say or do to make you believe me, but it's the truth. We discuss expectations, grievances, and misunderstandings. When we leave, the situation seems to have improved a little. We agreed to come again. That night Ben kissed me passionately for the first time ever, and we caressed each other tenderly. Beth present birthday, two years after the weekend. Jack completed his service and met someone a year ago. Judging by his description, she seems to be an amazing woman. Her husband died in the service, leaving her with three children whom she raised alone. Now they are engaged. He's planning a spring wedding and invited us. We declined, but wished him and his new wife all the best. 
It took a long time for me and Ben. We spent months in consultations, working on problems we didn't even know we had. In many ways, our marriage is stronger than ever. But sometimes I still feel the ghost of that weekend between us. Ben is still holding something inside. It may never be the same again, and you will have to live with it. Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one. Click to the next one. Click to the next one. Click to the next one.